Oh, um, hello, I'm uh, Elmar. I'm from team Upsense from Sweden. And I'll give you the technical pitch of a bit of the details of what we created and what we try to achieve. Um, first of all, I'll give a brief introduction about um, what our complete uh, tra tra trajectory is. So we start with an essay where we have to mix and we have to wash. Then we've got our uh, complete essay, which we'll put on the cartridge. Um, actually, this is the same, but I will show you later. Um, then we have to measure our essay and uh, measure the, the concentration that we've just um, to measure the concentration, and then this measurement we have to digitalize and send to the user. So, um, about our essay a little bit, um, we use a sandwich uh, methodology. So we've got uh, two antibodies, one which we conjugate with uh, magnetic beads, and one which we conjugate with um, quantum dots. We use quantum dots because the redshift is really big. This means that we excite the quantum dots in a UV spectrum, which is very near the 400 uh, nanometers. And we get the signal back, which is uh, infrared, which is 800 nanometers. And this is a really broad uh, difference, so that we don't have a lot of coupling from our excitation light into our uh, photodiode. So this, this is great. Uh, we've got strong uh, signals, um, which is also really good, so we can measure a lot of signal. And we use uh, magnetic beads so that we can uh, capture the, um, the antibodies that we actually want to use. Um, yeah, below you can see the, the two antibodies which we used from high test. Um, yeah, we used to because a higher, specific, a higher specificity is uh, reached. And I will show you an image about the, the general process. That's, for some reason, it's taking a while. Yeah, here we go. So this is a general process, as I mentioned before. We've got our two antibodies, which, are con which you conjugate with one with um, quantum dots and one with magnetic beads. And at the end, we'll uh, bind to our pro and pro BMP um, um, biomarker. And this will all go in a cartridge. So uh, we've got a mixing step. So we can do a mi mixing and a washing uh, on our cartridge. Um, we use a pump. First, to mix it, we uh, push uh, air into our cartridge. And then it will bubble. And this is the mixing stage. And this goes uh, really rapidly and doesn't require a lot of uh, attention from the nurse or from the doctor. And once it's, uh, once it's mixed, um, we reverse the pump, and then we go to the washing, um, to the cartridge. We first have to wash it. Uh, we wash out the, the stuff that we don't need. So we reverse the pump suction, and we pull out all the waste. And everything that we do need is um, near the magnet, magnets, because we use a, um, because we use a, a magnetic beads. Um, and um, they, they, they gather near the mag near permanent magnet. And for this, we also developed hardware. Um, we've got three boards. Uh, we've got a digital board, uh, analog board, and a board to bridge the, con uh, uh, the digital and the analog board together. Um, so here you can see some of our analog boards. We use a constant current source for, uh, to excite our, um, our assay. And this assay, then, we read out with a photodiode. This photodiode is only sensitive to infrared light. It's the same kind of photodiode that's maybe in television if you want to switch channels. It's also the infrared photodiode. And then we have a transimpedance um, amplifier, so we convert our current into a voltage. Then we have another um, amplifying stage where we uh, create a bigger, larger signal, so it's easier for our ADC to read out. And then this analog signal will then go to our digital board, which you can see here. And we've got uh, four of the shelf uh, components. Um, from the, we've got the uh, analog to digital converter from TI, which will read everything out. We've got a digital analog converter for the constant current source. And um, yeah, then a little bit about software. Everything is written in C++. Uh, it's really customizable, tailorable to what the user wants. And uh, we've got a web interface. So we've got HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which we use to display everything. And all the data is being transferred via WebSockets. And um, first, I want to show the sponsors. These are our sponsors. Are there any questions? And for the people who haven't seen it yet, this is this small is our reader, so you can uh, pass it around. That's our sensor. Which normally the glass plates are plastic, but it looks nicer if it's glass, so you can look into it. Yes, any questions? Yep. Do you have a question? 
Okay, then I have a question. What was the hardest part of your uh, yeah, technical process? The hardest part from the whole device? Mm, it's to figure out how sensitive our sensor has to be and to figure out how much light the quantum node emits. Because none of, we didn't know how we had sensitive we had to make the sensor and the biological part didn't really know in the start uh, what kind of sensitivity they could expect from us. So this we had to use with trial and error. We just had to start sampling and see how sensitive we really needed it to be. And um, yeah, this, this was really difficult in the beginning. We had a lot of uh, back and forth discussions about it's not sensitive enough and no, the assay is not sensitive, it's not giving enough light. So this, this was for us the most difficult part. Any more questions? Okay. So um, t you use a bandpass filter for like to, to um, separate the light, like the, the, the wavelengths? Um, we use an optical filter. This is on top of our photo diet. And uh, that's the only filtering we use uh, because this will pass out uh, everything lower than, I think it is 700 uh, nanometers, the wavelength of the light. Okay, thanks, thanks uh, once more. <laughs>